Hey guys, it's Bina. Welcome back to HexDD. In the last part, we cleared, we got all the cogs, gears, that's what they're called, and we cleared the, basically activated the thing. Oh, now, here's something you gotta do. First of all, go to this place. That thing rose up. You can grab the book. That's pretty much all you had to do, actually. So, I'll see you guys next time. I lied, that wasn't the only book. <laughs> now, so, one, since all the enemies kind of respawned, we gotta be kind of careful. Okay, now, what we gotta do is we gotta try and come back here, and then we gotta try and edge our way through here now. This is kind of a newish area that we've been blocked off before. It, it was so weird, the barricades. We got a second book, Demon Codex, yeah, they're just reusing elements from before. Um, so if we go in there and then we use the flicky thing, then we should have an enemy right in front of us. That's, that's, that's a very nice welcome. Uh, now we should be returning to the areas and... We should be returning to the areas, but... We have two books on possession. One of them with D and one of them with A. Where do you use them exactly? I'm assuming you use them on the bookshelf that doesn't have the skull. Now you use them on the respawning enemies. Huzzah! Do you just use the bookshelf or do you actually have to use the, the gears? Oh, nope, that's just a door that opened. Okay, so I guess all the ones with the skulls thingies on them, those are the ones you can open, okay. Hold on for a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we're going through the middle. I <laughs> said the middle. Oh. This one has a face in it. There you go. Okay, well that, that seems to work. Uh, so anyway, what, all of the other bookshelves. There's a quartz flask in there, I got shot. Quartz flask. Okay, so that was interesting. Uh, now we gotta do that again. For the other one, so... A bit of inspecting, we should be able to determine which one it is, just by looking... There you go. The way back is open. It's basically the way saying of the secret map is open. Now, yeah, we're kind of doing the secret map a little bit early, but hey, why, why not? It's 10 p.m. I've got time. So yeah, that's that's what you gotta do for the secret map. You've gotta first of all you do all the cog puzzles, and you gotta go back to that optional map. You don't actually have to do all the cog puzzles, you can skip the one that involves the <laughs> place. Anyway, you, you only have to do three of those. But if you do that fourth place, the, the sewer place, then you can get the books, put them in the shelves, and then you can go all the way back here, which will lead you to Ice Hole, which is the final secret map. And it's kind of interest kind of intriguing. I went to none of the secret maps on my original playthrough. Uh, well, I went to one of the secret map on my original playthrough of the, of the original game. Doing this blind, well then again, I looked them up blind. But to be honest, to be honest, I would be kind of close. I would have checked out that map. I would have seen how I could have picked up the oh, book. Uh, I would have seen how I could pick up the book, and probably with subsequent plays, I could probably figure out this one. And the other two basically just involved going someplace at the end. Getting the next thing out. Then again, I kind of got stuck without even. I got stuck without even, like, grabbing all the thing I was. I just don't know exactly where I got stuck. I think it's just because I didn't look for the other. the other flame mask that well. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so we gotta fight a lot of these guys. Again, yeah, still doing this blind, so I don't know. 100% about what's going on, but 
Jump there. It'd be kind of awkward for people on N64. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if the expansion was on the N64. Still be kind of awkward for jumps. Whew, did you just see that? Oh, I killed him like that. Also, is the fire hands pretty good? The fire hands may be a little bit more effective. Ah. Intriguing why they would throw in an ice level as a secret level, but one thing I do like about these secret levels in the expansion pack is that they're actually levels, not just, you know, deathmatch arenas. Which they've been before, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, granted, yeah. I don't think Hexen is be that good for... Did you just see what they did there? Did... I, I'm, not, I'm not just imagining that, they just... Put me in a death trap. What? Not again. Not again. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at my map. Sorry, I can't see you. I'm looking at my map. Some guys kind of go around. Okay, so this is one of the switches. We're in LP 15, kind of, yeah. But we're almost done with the other exit. I got squished. Oh, 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 ah! Uh. Your boneless pit didn't entirely work. <laughs> It's just like, what? I'm guessing it's like, activate the switch and run? Oh, hello. Was I supposed to get out of here? I don't know if I was supposed to get out of there like that. I think I had to like, find another switch. I don't know. Oh, I see what they're getting at. They're going for a map where you've got to travel around. Activate the four switches, or three. It's probably four. It actually, looks like three to be honest. That's my AC. Eight. Um. Also, I hope you guys have been okay with me playing it a little bit illegitly. Like using a custom HUD for GZ Doom and also the fact that it's GZ Doom. Apparently made the thing I go around. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm afraid of doing this. What does this do? Oh, well, I guess it just activates the guys, on the board, which I can't seem to hit, but I can hit with that. Also, I don't want to touch that. I can jam myself in there. Just taunting me with the. The oxen guy. Okay, so back to this one. Ah, oh, I see what they did there. Stand here. You start walking out. And the thing disappears and all the spikes fall as well. Yeah, it's it's a little bit mean at first. I I'm, I'm not a big fan of those. It's just... <laughs> When you think about it, the game is designed about around the the fact that the player can res can respawn. It's kind of intriguing. They would design the game around the fact that the player would just need to n 
memorize all this. I mean, that's what games did, and it's, it's kind of strange seeing an adventure game pull that off. So, yeah, not, not very well. Of course, you know, a modern game would never do that. There would be some sort of sign that, the, the, you know, the floor's gonna fall in or something. In this game, it kind of, things just happen. I've noticed that. Of course, it's not its not perfect by the stretch of the imagination. It's definitely more compelling in my mind. It seems odd, but it just... It has that... Just... This wonder, this amazement. I just feel so... Indiana Jones like... So... Right in this room, also. Then the. I busted it up, didn't I? There you go. Now that I am. I I'm also. I just keep respawning. It's kind of annoying. I, d I don't like the respawning enemies. I mean, I know. I know. They're intended so you don't, you know, I, I, I really want to know what's over in that direction as well. Huzzah! Absolutely nothing. Oh, there's apparently a lift in that direction. I mean, I, I, I can see that you can drop down. Which now well, that's it. Um so yeah, that's a secret stage. And then I get, yeah, I guess that's a secret stage. You just end up coming back here. That was actually pretty interesting for a secret stage. See the thing is that like the levels there's a lot of things going on with them, but not specifically there's a lot of interest going on with levels. One thing I find with Hexen is that they throw tons of concepts and they never develop on any of well, Doom and stuff throw a handful of concepts you can understand and then they just use them a lot. Um, this one is Dark Watch. We had the bridge appear on this one. I might as well try and clear off this area. Is that a bridge that appeared? I don't exactly know what it means by it. a bridge has appeared. I mean, you have to go a bridge is cool. I mean, I know that, but it's just like... Oh. Maybe it said stairs have risen. like to play the new Professor Layton game for three yes. I mean like I, I, I don't have it on me. I don't, I don't actually own it but I would like to play it. For no for some for people who haven't tried Professor Layton, I would ask them why. Is it because you don't own a DS? In that case that's that's probably the best excuse. If it's like it's not your genre, maybe just try it out. Because it's not really like a specific genre of this game. I'd like to get into one of these cages because it definitely does look like a different, different angle, but I don't know. I activated a switch. Now well, I'm assuming I'll go back and now a ring here. I don't think I noticed that before. Um I shall take this guy out. 
Okay, there's a symbol in there, so obviously that's that's the end point pretty much. But there's a teleport in, so that's the that's the awkward part. And I don't expect I definitely activate something. I can't tell what I've activated though. Um and stuff. Um. Uh, but yeah, like, is, is it because, have you never played because it's on a Nintendo system? Or maybe you should not be as prejudiced. I mean, uh, like, I, I don't like advertising right now, because basically it's like Nintendo is like appealing to everyone. But everyone else is being appealed to because gaming has suddenly started to start being a subculture again. I don't know, it started, it started kind of being a bit mainstream in the early 2000s, and now it's just kind of lost it. Suddenly it's become a bit of a subculture, like, you know, I don't know what exactly. And that guy's a respawning enemy, so think of his efforts. I don't exactly know what to do with this map, so I guess I'll see you guys next time on X and DD.